All right, camera angle is pretty low, so I'll keep this brief. Today I'm gonna to show you how I'm taking care of my plants. Don't really have much tips. Um, I'll just spew out whatever I'm thinking, but I'm sure you guys can find a lot of information online. Maybe this will kind of get you jump started on a direction on what you kind of need to consider when taking care of plants indoors. So let's get water and where's my water? Oh, all right. All right, so have a couple plants here. Can kind of showcase it. So some plants might be in pots where it's kind of hard to tell. Like typically I tell by sticking my finger into the sand or the soil and seeing how dry it is. But with this plant, I can kind of tell just because a lot of the leaves on the sides are kind of slowly drooping. And this one just has soil that drains super well. I'm gonna just water it. I do this about once a week for this plant. So key thing about watering is you guys want to make sure that when you pour water in, it's not just like a little bit. You guys want to water it thoroughly where water is dripping out for a little bit. So as you guys see, soil drains really fast for this one. I have a little bucket with a little cage on top. So I'm just gonna let it air dry for a while so that I don't have water damage to my like drawers or even fungus buildup. That's happened. So this one, oh shit, it's like almost dying. All right. So this is another Peperomia. As you guys see, this mofo is swaying way to the side. But typically when you guys look at leaves, they should be open like this like super wide open but if they start ending up like these guys where they kind of curl up um i don't have other plants that show that right now but typically the harder leaved plants kind of shrivel up this kind of helps it from losing more water just think of it when you're getting cold and you don't want to lose too much heat you kind of like huddle up same idea with the plant it just kind of curls up so it's not going crazy in terms of photos photosynthesizing and just using up too much water again this plant obviously needs water yellowing leaves curling up and a lot of little leaves falling apart because needs more nutrients and all that good jazz again water it so that the water starts dripping out that way you you're definitely sure that the water has reached down to the roots most plants aren't rooted at the top a lot of plants are obviously rooted at the bottom and water needs to get way down there all right I can keep doing this Should probably show you a couple more yeah this one might be easier to show in terms of checking when the soil has dried out you can kind of just hear it. Like if you squeeze this or pick up a pot and it's like super light, you know that all the moisture has like evaporated from the soil itself. And that essentially means it's watering time. And it's hard to tell with this plant, the, uh, what do you call it? Philodendron Brazil, I think. Cause all the leaves just point downwards anyways. Yeah, it's not very obvious. And like, it's hard to tell because this one's like, has growth at the top as well. Shit's wild. But just checking, stick your finger in maybe like an inch or two. If the surface itself is like rock hard, that means the water has dried and things have like crumpled up. Think of like a palm leaf jar. When it dries up, it starts crackling and then like, it separates from the container and just kind of shrivels up. So another key clue on when to water your plants. And again, just water it so that thoroughly it kind of goes through. Make sure you just kind of pour water all over. Cool, cool, cool. Moving on to the Pelea. We see that this guy is leaning a lot. 
So that brings me to another good point I should cover is considering the light source of where you put your plants. My plant essentially is, let's say it's right here. The light source is coming from like straight ahead. So that's why it's leaning so much that way. Essentially the plant just goes directly to where this, the, I guess, stronger point of light is. So another thing to consider if you're placing your plant in your room or indoors is <clears throat> where the light source is coming from. Because essentially the plant will start leaning that way. So from time to time, you're gonna need to rotate your plant, maybe do it every watering so that things kind of even out. For me, this one's leaning a lot. That just means I haven't rotated for a while. And I don't know, it gives a character at this point. So soil is pretty dry. This soil doesn't drain too fast as compared to the other one. So I'll show you guys just watering it. Just give it like maybe a cup in and let it settle. It's gonna take a minute. Right now I'm using distilled water. I usually just use tap water because I don't really care. But after watching more plant videos and just learning more about how plants grow indoors and just in general, tap water has a lot of chlorine and other minerals that plants don't need or want and that can also damage the plant itself. So the number one culprit from what I see is chlorine. You can get dechlorination like pills or whatever processes or get a distilled water machine. That shit's like 120 or 130 bucks. I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'm gonna stick with my gallon jugs of distilled water. Maybe go through like this 90 cent gallon once a month so probably have to break six years before I start considering getting a reverse osmosis filtering system so that I believe is what creates distilled water but as you guys see water is slowly dripping out at that point I know I've watered enough <clears throat> just looking at the leaves these are pretty healthy this one's kind of yellowing it. Um, usually you guys don't want to worry too much if it's just like slightly yellow. Typically the bottom leaves of most plants start falling off. That's because growth is either going up or just outwards. And at that point, it's just using up all the nutrients. So the bottom guys kind of shrivel up and die, fall off. Here's a little baby Palea. So same idea. Just watering it, same amount. So I usually just water about a cup in and kind of let it settle before I add more because I don't really want to waste this just distilled water at this point. What other things I need to cover? I guess temperature, but in California, temperature is pretty constant. Just make sure things are warm and not too drastic. Just like if someone has asthma, going from a hot room to a cold room, there's gonna be shock to the lungs and that kind of triggers, triggers the inflammation in your lungs. Same idea with plants. If temperatures fluctuate too drastically, it's gonna create some kind of shock and kind of disrupt the plant's growing cycle. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I want to keep the humidity slightly up in your room if you do have a lot of tropical plants. Uh, super easy to plant to start with and take care of, I would say, is like the pothos. Those are just resilient and pretty adaptable. My brother has one just thrown outside and it's survived the last like four months. Don't know how, but it's out there. I can show you guys. Let's see. I kind of messed up on repotting one of my pothos and essentially most of the leaves are just at this point gone. So let me go ahead and get that. I'll reset. Oh fuck. I'll reset that. So I show you guys one thing not to do when you're either repotting or propagating or whatever. 
So, repotting, propagating, you're gonna need a new pot. You're gonna need new soil. New soil usually has like fertilizer in it already for plants to kind of get a jump start on growing the first maybe like half year. I just get the Miracle Grow indoor potting mix and then I kind of mix it with perlite. Usually like a 50-50 ratio. And dumb me when I essentially separated a huge pothos and put it into its individual pots. What I forgot was my water in the bottle was fertilizing or like, uh, what do you call it? Plant food water. That essentially like overfed the plant and you get what people refer to as like the leaves burning it's it was pretty sad to see so my plant had a lot of leaves essentially you'll get stuff like this like this this is like the beginning of it it was real sad dude like real sad Essentially, you'll just end up like crisp leaves because I guess I don't know if it's too acidic or too alkaline, but too much of anything is going to be bad. And I just was forgetful. So don't want to leave those leaves in too long just because they'll start rotting and that's perfect breeding grounds for bugs to start growing. Essentially, you just want to kind of either cut them off or peel them off. I usually just peel them off because it's pretty easy. With and so this is the pothos. Um, as you guys see, even after that fiasco, it's still starting to grow back. So super resilient plant, easy to kind of monitor and grow, just because it'll essentially show you when it needs water. So the leaves start drooping like this. So this. This guy is thirsty. <clears throat> Essentially do this watering system like once every two weeks, just cause my room is essentially the same temperature for a long time. Again, water it, maybe like a cup in, let it settle. So at that point, the water is already dripping. So I know at that I know that we're good. So that's essentially it. Other things I check for are bugs because I usually have an issue with spider mites just because my room itself doesn't get too much uh, ventilation. My assumption is that these bugs just come out to party and they start essentially expanding and just taking over plants. My biggest enemy right now is spider mites. And I usually get them on the harder leafed plants. These guys are usually fine, minus the Pelea, just because the leaves somehow are good breeding grounds for those little guys. But what else can I cover? Hmm. That's pretty much it. Take care of dead leaves, essentially cut them off if you see them. If they're yellowing, there's no going back because once it starts yellowing, you just have lost all the, I guess, plant chlorophyll or it's just dead at that point. So typically if the leaves are yellowing, just cut them off so that the main part of the plant still has the nutrition coming to it or the nutrients. Yeah, I guess that's it for essential plant, plant care. Other things is humidity. Um, you guys might not have access to like a humidifier and those things are typically pretty expensive unless you use one of those like baby ones for yourself with like aromatherapy or whatever. That could function. You just place an exo plant and just keep the humidity up. For me, I just spray it with a bottle. Um, got like a cheap dollar bottle from Costco or not Costco from Ikea. And every morning I just wake up and spray the, spray all my plants that need it. So typically all the tropical plants. What else? What else? I think that's it. Just chilling. 
to, I guess, kind of summarize, consider um, when you're getting a plant or growing a plant, consider the temperature of your room. If you're going to blast AC and stuff, that might give the plant some shock. Consider the light source coming into your room. Um, typically, a south facing window gets a lot of light, west or east, depending on where you're located. For California, I believe if you got a north facing window, that's probably the least amount of light. The south has the most. And then the west and east is like half and half. So just considering the trajectory of the sun and how it goes through your window. So the more light that comes in, the more indirect light your plant's gonna get and the more it's gonna grow. But if it's very little, you're gonna have to like consider plants that don't need that much light and kind of can kind of survive like basically through anything. Number three, water source. Tap water for the most part has been fine for me in the last like year and a half. I've only recently switched to distilled water. I haven't really noticed a difference. So either I'm just draining money or my plants are super happy and they're just trying to surprise me at some point and grow like crazy in the next month or two. Number four, just keep your plants clean. If you see say yellow or browning leaves, either cut them off or just peel them off. And I guess number five would be like the soil. Right. Yeah, number five would be the soil on what you use. Just think of well draining soil, Google that. A lot of people mix in orchid bark, uh, diatomaceous earth. You got, what else is there? Wood chips, some people use or a lot of people use perlite, some type of clay, essentially a mix of everything with a good like indoor growing soil. You just want to get the soil to drain semi quickly, especially if you're living in a colder climate, water can kind of just stay there, pull up and just grow into fungus and create what we know as root rot. Essentially just think of it as, let's see, what can I compare it to? Let's say you've just been sweating for a long time and you just don't shower. Obviously you're gonna stink, right? So just imagine that carried out for like two, three weeks. You're gonna develop some, some type of fungal infection like athlete's foot. Same thing for the plant. You're gonna get some kind of fungus in the soil that starts eating up the roots and then plants die. Number six would be, I'd say the humidity part. Um, Humidifier works, spray bottle works. You can even leave uh, trays with water around the plant. Some people use like rocks and stuff and have the plant on top and then water at the bottom. So it just kind of slowly evaporates throughout the day. And I think that's it. I'd say that's like the top six things to consider when you're kind of caring for a plant. Um, I mean, I'm only like a year and like eight months into this, so fairly new and I don't really go crazy with reading up on it. I'm just kind of trying to learn from experience and just talking to people. Yeah, definitely a couple hundred dollars in, but obviously you guys can tone that way, way back. I just needed something to keep me busy. And this was fun, trendy, and i don't know just low maintenance in general and it's just fun to see plants grow it's like not as crazy as raising a dog or like a kid or anything it's still like a little somewhat of like not a creature but just like a little being and you're just watching it grow i think that's it that video was a lot longer than i thought but Hope you guys enjoy. Probably make more of these because got nothing else to do. My, I don't know. What do you guys want to hear about my life? It's pretty simple. Maybe I'll just complain about um, the whole freelance life in the next video. I miss all this coronavirus.
craziness. All right. Well, catch you guys next time.